everybody, this is Steve Winward, and in this video, I want to show you how you can leverage Azure's privilege identity management with governance for the Power Platform. So what I'm going to show you here is how you can uh, enable Power Platform admin roles to have just-in-time access to the roles that they need it when they need it. And you can also, along the way, ensure that there's checks and balances to make sure that the right things for your organization are approved before they get that access. So what I'm going to show here is how you can use Privilege Identity Management to grant eligibility for people to get access to things like the Power Platform admin role, the Power BI admin role, and also the Dynamics 365 admin role. I'll walk you through what it looks like from an end user perspective first, and then I'll show you how you can set that up in the Azure portal. And if you have any questions or comments on this, please put them in the comments below. One last thing I forgot to mention here, this will work in both commercial Azure as well as Azure for government. The good news for those people that are in our US sovereign clouds means that this works in both commercial Office 365, Office 365 GCC, Office 365 GCC High, as well as Office 365 DoD. Now, before I elevate to the Power Platform admin role, I just wanna show you what the admin center looks like without that, so that we can compare this to when I then get access to the Power Platform admin role, what the admin center looks like. So we're gonna to go to the gear icon, we'll say admin center, and when I go in here, you'll see that there's really not a whole lot that I can do in here. And so on the left over here, there's really not a lot of options. And then I'm also getting an unexpected error when I list the environments. It's because I can't really make changes to the environment as a non-admin user. So now that we have privilege identity management set up, what I want to show you is what that looks like. So I'm signed in as Diego. Diego does not have standing power platform admin roles. He's just a regular user that has a Power Apps license assigned to him. So this is the experience that he sees. But there may be times where he needs to go into the Power Platform Admin Center to do things like, for example, modifying a data policy for his environment. So if you wanted to do that with a just-in-time elevation, this is how you would do that. We've already set up the, the policy in at the Azure portal. Diego now has to go to the Azure portal as well to do the elevation. So let's go ahead and sign into the portal. Now we're signed into the portal. We're going to do a search for privileged identity management. There we go. And now what we want to do is we want to activate just in time. So we're going to go to activate here and we'll see that we have a number of different roles that are eligible because Diego in this case is a part of that same security group that we set up. We see the different roles that he can request in real time. So for this one, what we want is a power platform admin role. We're going to go ahead and activate this. And this will take a second here. And so by default, it's giving the request of eight hours, but that's configurable. The next thing we have to do is just put a reason to justify why we're elevating. So in this case, I'll put an explanation here. So the request I'm putting in here is that I need to be able to modify a data policy for my Power Platform environment. So we'll go ahead and activate that. And this will take a few moments to go ahead and finalize. And if you notice there, it was actually signing out and signing back in. The reason it's doing that is because when these roles get assigned, when you log into Azure Active Directory, there are different roles that are added to the token that's issued. So that's why the Azure portal does that kind of sign in again. Now, the one thing you wanna also make sure you do here is that right after you do the elevation, you may need to sign out of your Office 365 environment and sign back in. It's the same reason. You wanna make sure that the token that's issued has the admin roles that you need when that token gets issued. And sometimes it may take a few minutes. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually going to sign out and then sign back in. So we'll go ahead and sign out. And now I'm gonna go ahead and sign back in. So we'll go to portal.office.com. Okay, so now I'm signed back in. And if we go to the Power Platform Admin Center, we should now see things that I didn't have the ability to do before I got the elevation. So let's go to the Admin Center. And if we look at data policies, I now have the ability to create and manage policies where I didn't before the elevation. So just to kind of summarize here a couple of things, I had to just in time elevate myself to get this permission. I don't have standing permissions to this role, but I had the ability to elevate if I need to. So at this point, you might be saying, what's the difference between privilege identity management's just-in-time access to just standing access to admin roles? Well, it's a couple of things. In this case, Diego now does not have 24 by seven Power Platform admin role access. 
which we've effectively reduced kind of the surface area of when he has those permissions. The other thing that we got here was we were forced to sign in. We were not doing multi-factor authentication, but that is something you can add to that flow. The other thing you can do to take it a step further is that you can actually require an approval access, meaning somebody else who's an admin has to approve that request before, in this case, Diego gets the rights to do that. So it's really all about reducing the amount of people that have standing roles and also ensuring that when people do get those roles, that there are checks and balances in place to do that. Everything is audited in this process. So you can always go back and kind of view and understand what's happened. And so now what I want to do is I want to show you how do you set this up in the Azure portal? So let's go back to my laptop and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, to get started to set this up, we're going to go to the Azure portal. In this case, we're hitting the commercial Azure portal. If you are using Azure for government, it would be portal.azure.us instead. So I'm going to go to the top here. I'm going to search for privileged. And once we do that, we see Azure AD privileged identity management. Now this is the portal for privileged identity management in Azure. We've got a couple different options here, but what I want to show you is how you can manage the access to create policies to allow people to have just-in-time access to things like the Power Platform admin roles. So first, we're going to go into Manage Access. And now when this loads, we see all of the tenant-level roles that are available to assign to people for the just-in-time access. So we're going to go down here, for example, you could do this for the, the global administrator. But then for the Power Platform specifically, we have a Power BI administrator role. We also have a Power Platform administrator role. And then we also have a Dynamics 365 administrator role. So what I'm gonna do in this scenario is I'm gonna create a security group that we're gonna to assign to all three of those roles to make them what we're gonna call PIM eligible, meaning they can do the just-in-time elevation to get these roles for a period of time, and then they can do what they need, and then the access will go away. So what I want to do now is I'm going to go back over to Azure Active Directory and we want to create a security group for this. So let's go ahead and we'll go to Azure Active Directory. We're going to go to groups and we're going to create a new group. And the name of this group, I'm going to call it Power Platform Admin Eligible Users. And the other thing that I'm going to do here is that I'm actually going to enable a preview feature which allows a group to be assigned to an Azure Active Directory role. Now, what I think is really nice about this is then we can put any users that need this just-in-time elevation to this group, rather than having to maintain the policy every single time an individual user needs this capability. So I'm also then going to add the user that we're going to test with this. In this case, it's gonna be Diego. So let's go ahead and add Diego to this group. Okay, so I just selected Diego. We'll go ahead and assign that, and now we'll go ahead and create it. Now, there are no roles assigned to this group. We'll go to Privilege Identity Management, and then we're going to assign this to the Power Platform roles that we just discussed. So let's go back to Home. We're going to go back to Privilege Identity Management. We're going to now manage the access, and we're going to do this for each of the roles. So let's first do it for Dynamics 365. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add an assignment. We will then search for the Power Platform Admin Eligible group that we just created. So let's do a search for Power Plat. And now we see Power Platform Admin Eligible Users. We'll go ahead and check that, say Select. We'll go to Next. And now here, this is where you can decide what do you want to do with this? Do you want to make that role immediately active? Or do you want to make them just eligible? Eligible in this case means that they have the ability to do a just-in-time elevation, but they don't have standing access to these roles. That's what we want to set up here. So all of this looks good to go. They are permanently eligible in this case. You don't have to do that if you don't want to, but in this case, that's what we're doing. And now we'll go ahead and assign that. Okay, so that's good to go. From here, what I want to do now is I want to add the next two admin roles to that same group. So now we're going to add Power Platform Admin and Power BI admin roles to that security group that we created. So let's go back over to the Power Platform admin role, and we're going to do that exact same thing. So once again, we'll look for the Power Platform. We'll add that there, say Select, Next, make that eligible. We'll go ahead and say Assign. And now let's look for the Power BI admin role, and we'll search for the Power Platform admin eligible users that we just created. We'll select that, Next. This one is also a check to permanently eligible, so we'll assign that. 
Okay, so now we're good to go on that. And now we have three different admin roles, Dynamics 365, Power Platform Admin, and Power BI Admin with that same security group assigned to that. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope it was helpful to see how you can apply Power Platform Governance with Azure Privilege Identity Management to give people just-in-time access to the admin roles that they need. I think that this is a much more secure way for organizations to go about handing out admin roles and it's also a much better way to make sure that the right checks and balances are enforced before you grant people in your organization those admin roles. If you have any questions or comments about this video or any suggestions on ways that you could use this, I'd love to see them in the comments below. Until next time, thank you for taking the time to watch this video.